Yes, okay. Um, yeah, the first the title is Developer's Guide to Productivity. You have the wrong in your in the schedule and uh, everywhere, I think, because we talked about this like a month ago, but they forgot to update it, so now it's wrong everywhere. So, yeah, but uh, I think you will have a lot of value about this because um, the reason I changed was because uh, career advice is like a very broad topic and 25 minutes is not enough to go in depth for anything about that. So. Um, so I scaled down a bit, and uh, productivity is something that is relevant for everyone, and like one of the core things to be a successful developer in a way. So I think you will have a lot of value about this in this talk. So I will talk about like how to be productive and get things done and produce value for yeah for your product or for your clients if you're in an agency. Um, and the tools might not work for you, ev everything, because this is like individual for everyone. So, um, yeah, but you can try it out yourself and see what what works for you. And yeah, this is me. Uh, my name is Peter Elmred, as he said. And uh, who am I? Yeah, I'm an experienced uh, WordPress developer and WooCommerce developer, um, specialized in WooCommerce. Um, and I created my first WooCommerce store in 2011, just after the, the initial release. It was like, um, we were choosing to build an e-commerce site, and then it was like three uh, different plugins for WordPress at the time. It was like VP Commerce, Jigo Shop, and then it was like WooCommerce was a new one. It was so we, we picked WooCommerce, and it was a good pick, because that was, that was the one that really stick with the community, so it was good to get an early experience with that platform. Um, yeah, I've been working with NQAT for three years. Oops. <laughs> um, but now I'm going to start to freelance. Uh, I'm going to... Um, uh, now in the spring, I will start to take contracts freelancing. So if you're need a WooCommerce expert, I'm available in the spring. Um, and I'm very excited about freelancing. I think it will be really ex exciting. Um, and I've been very active in the WordPress community. And uh, unfortunately, it's been like a little bit less now in the last years, because when you grow up, you have more responsibilities. And I, I got a child now in the spring, so it takes a lot of time as well. And now and this actually relates a lot of to that because to get productive, you need to do more in less time. So, so when you grow up, you need to have your priorities straight and you need to be focused on the job. And then when you come home, you have to take care of the family and everything like that, or do your side projects or whatever you want. Um, so yeah, I find that it's like two main types of developers. Um, the first one is like, uh, really passionate about uh, developing, and they like spend a lot of time developing. And both in the free time and on the job, they like stay l late hours and are really passionate about it. And uh, then the one, the one is like the nine to five developers that just do it for a job. Uh, but this talk is for actually both of those groups because both of those uh, categories will uh, really want to have a productive. Um, yeah, productive time on the job, so they can spend more time with family, hobbies, and everything, like side projects or exercise, and also like just relax because that's very important as well. When you work with your head all day, you need to calm down a little sometimes and like clear your mind and your head. Um, yeah. So who this presentation for? Yeah, I talked about it a little. It's but it's not just for developers, it's for anyone who collaborates with developers a lot of time in, in the job because they will learn what developers need to, to be productive and, yeah, and what they need to do a good job. Uh, so it's project managers or project owners or whatever you have in your company that's, that runs the projects for the developers and uh, also like salespeople or account managers that talks to the customers and 
want new features, they cannot like come and disturb the developers all the time because they need to focus on their job. Um, and in some case, clients, because sometimes the clients have direct access to the developers, like if you're a freelancer or, or small agency or yeah, however you, however you do that, they need to respect that the developers need time to really focus on their job. They cannot answer the phone all the time and be disturbed. Yeah, okay, some facts. Uh, what makes a good productive programmer? So 1% talent, 2% hard work and dedication, 3% stack overflow and Google, and then 94% avoiding the distractions of the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously a joke, but uh, it's, it's more true than you actually might think in the first, because uh, the first time I saw this was like the first month of my first job. I was like an experienced developer, had this, this uh, background on a desktop, and I was oh, that was, that was that was funny, but I didn't really understand the concept then. But it's it's really been growing on me this this joke because yeah, now seven years later, I like I have an understanding about what what you really need to be productive, and that it's really big thing that you need to. Yeah, stay focused on your job and not like, oh, it's so easy to be distracted about everything. You have Facebook and you have everything right next to your at your fingertips when you're when you're working. So it's really easy to get distracted. And uh, because the the human brain like is really picks up on all the nov novelty all the time, all the new things that are oh, pling in the sea or your phone, and then you focus all your attention to that, to your phone or whatever that sounds or notifications never, or something like that. Um, so yeah, fact number one, uh, distractions uh, is the number one productive killer for almost all developers and it's, that's pretty universal. Um, and on average, the average employee gets interrupted 56 times per day. This is a study from Atlassian, a famous uh, IT company, probably heard of. Uh, it's from some infographic I found. I don't know how true it is, but... <laughs> and this is well from the same infographic. On average, two hours uh, per day is spent on recovering from distractions, like when someone come tap you on the shoulder and, oh, did you check this email or did you tell your the clients this or something that then you lose your focus then you have to recover from this distraction to get into programming again um, and more than 80 percent of the distract the uh, the interruptions at work are like trivial it's not it's like oh did you check this mail or it's very simple things that I don't really need to disturb the developer for because yeah, it's not, not that important, and it can mo most of the time it can wait. Um, and 73 <laughs> percent is some <laughs> statistics made up. This is <laughs> yeah, the source is actually Business Insider, so it should should be credible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, this this article is actually a joke as well because it's it talks about that, that people tend to believe everything because it's statistics. So yeah, you should take, take it with a grain of salt maybe. But yeah, I, I believe it's true, so I think you can take my word for it. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of statistics, so now we take a, what do you say about a comic instead? Um, this you've probably seen, uh, if you're a developer at least, you have probably seen it. But um, Why well you should not interrupt the programmer is like viral thing about uh, the developer sends everywhere and you've seen it like in Facebook groups or Slack. Um, yeah, so it's like the developer is working and then uh, yeah, someone is solving some com complex problem with a lot of relationships and everything, and then the product manager come and oh, I sent you an email about this thing. And then all this, everything he had in his head is like gone. 
and then the product managers walks away and he don't know what he has done to the developer. Um, so yeah, this is, um, yeah, when, when you work on a complex problem as a developer, like, you, you build up like mental models that are quite complex in your head and you need to have it there so you can like solve the problem because in pro in, uh, when you develop something, it's like, a lot of relationships, and if you change here, some things might blow up here, and you have to have most of this in your head at all time. Um, and it can take like anything from five to thirty minutes after you have been disturbed to like recover from this distraction and really become uh, productive again. And this, of course, time that is completely wasted when you and it can be avoided. So, interruptions, how bad can it be? Um, yeah, the task takes longer to complete, and the quality of the work is reduced because when you have this mental model um, destroyed, you, it's much more likely that you produce bugs or like don't think about something that is another part of the system or something like that. That's it's like regression fault is, uh, is much more common. Um, and also learning and the future application of what you learn is hampered a lot when you're distracted, when you're learning. Because it's the way the brain stores the information, it's like, it gets like fragmented and you cannot recall all the context and you can't uh, use the information in the same, in a, in a really good way when you're distracted while you learn. Uh, and also it reduces motivation for the developer and like you get frustrated because you like miss your deadlines or you don't yeah if you promise someone that you need to get it done for today today and or this week and you get distracted you cannot be productive and develop or pr pr uh, um, you cannot, cannot deliver on your commitments okay so uh, it's surprising a little little um, uh, research done on this um, compared to how much the c how big the cost is for companies that when you waste time with distractions because yeah it's enormous time feel like you see so before that two hours per day in average that's completely wasted time and if you are a thousand developers it's a lot of money for a big company so it's surprisingly that it's quite little research about this. Um, so uh, at least one term that has that I've seen uh, in the research is attention residue is called. And it's a, a term for um, when you're focused on something and then someone something comes up like an email you have to that you have to answer. You read like the notification that comes up on your phone or everything. Uh, and then you when you try to go back to your work, you have this still in your head, this email that you need to answer or... Yeah, so you, you cannot completely uh, put your attention back to what you were doing before and it can take up to 30 minutes as well to really refocus. So, yeah, what happens when you disturb a developer like several times an hour? Um, yeah, it's that they won't get so much done. Most most developers at least, it's like, this is very individual as well. Some people are more uh, more fragile for this kind of interruption and get disturbed much more. Uh, so what can we do about it? Um, and the first thing is digital distractions that you can control yourself on your, on your own devices, like notifications on the, uh, on your computer, like email, Slack or notif or IMs or anything um, like Max have at least a do not disturb mode, so it disables all the notifications. Um, and also put your phone on silent mode, um, so it doesn't disturb you. Um, and if you have something very important, you have like most phones have the if you favorite the contact, they can call you anyway. So um, if it's really important. 
um, and also like clean up your workspace. I know this might, someone who knows me might laugh about this because <laughs> I have a lot of tabs usually when I develop, but uh, try, try to like minimize it and, and, and close the programs you don't use. Um, I know I'm not so good at that. <laughs> um, so especially like programs that have notifications in the in the title, like not Facebook has when you get a notification, it like blinks. You have one notification, you see it in the tabs, and that's not so good. So close to anything like that at least, and just keep the tabs and the programs you need for the current task. Um, that will reduce the urge to like switch to something that's not related to your job. Um, and yeah, structural planning is like the key for all productivity. It's like the basic thing you always need that everything rests on. Uh, and here's a one one technique. It's like the Ohio principle. It's called. It's like it stands for only handle it once. It's like if you get an email. Um, you should like try to answer it straight away. You should not like read the email and then think about it and then like continue working, because then you will. The next time you have to answer this email, you need to read it again and you need to, and it will stay in the back of your head. So you need like close this, answer it. If you if you read the email, you need to answer it straight away so you don't. And then you can stop thinking about it, and that gives you more, more focus on the next task. Uh, and define your MIT, your most important task, like for the day. If you have lots of tasks, you need to like have one task that is most important. That what you should focus on uh, until it's completed. Um, and this give, gives you also uh, tools to handle your 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 less important tasks, so that you, you can. Um, you can prior prioritize down the tasks that you don't need to do like straight away or not need to do today or small tasks so you can focus on this most important task. And yeah, scheduling is very, very powerful. Um, so try to schedule as much as possible, like schedule when you should work and when you should answer emails and it could be very important to also let your colleagues know when you're available to like have a meeting or yeah. So try to schedule your day and your week. Like, it would also be good to schedule your activities that you have outside of job, so you can. Yeah, it's. It gets much easier if you use the calendar more than you do. Uh, this is one like exercise that you can, if you define your perfect day, um, and you can have this as like as a long-term goal that you want to. Uh, you want to get to somewhere sometime. Um, so, like, what do you, how do you, what do you do when you get up in the morning, and how do you get to the job, and how long do you work, and what do you do after the job? Like, if you do exercise or meet a friend or something, um, and have this like, this is the goal, and then like try to improve like one thing at a time. Like, um, one one really good thing if you snooze in the morning is like stop to snooze and like take really try to do that for like two weeks and after two weeks you it won't be so hard anymore because then you have train your head like create the habit to not uh, snooze anymore and then you will like save time every day in the future and snoozing is like it's done a lot of research about that and it's like completely wasted time because you will not get any more energy from snoozing because and you will in most times actually get tired, more tired in the day if you snooze. So that's one thing if you do that, you can try like an experiment, like every every day for at least two to three weeks. Uh, don't snooze at all, like get up straight away. And after two to three weeks, it should, it should, not, it should not feel uh, hard to do anymore because then you have trained your head. So that when the alarm sounds, you should get up uh, and this you can do b uh, with a lot of things like train, um, but it's important to do like one thing at a time because um, this is because willpower is like you have a limited amount of willpower that you can spend on like 
do difficult things that this that does not give you like instant rewards. Um, it was like on the keynote talk before that there is this loop with reward and uh, action. Um, so uh, if you don't get the immediate reward, you will not. It would be hard to do because your brain tells you not this is not worth to do. And um, but it it usually has like long term benefits, but the brain doesn't work that way. It doesn't much see the the long time the long term benefits. Uh, and then yeah, after two to three weeks, you have probably created a habit about like not snoozing anymore. Uh, and habits is very powerful because you don't spend any willpower at all when you execute an, a habit, uh, and you don't spend any like mental power neither. You like it's like automatic, so you don't think about it anymore. Um, Yeah, and uh, there's a great book about this, uh, The Power of Habit. This will be a, a picture about it in the last slide, so you can see it there if you're interested in creating a better, like, better day for yourself and like do more good things. Um, so yeah, it's very, very good book. I can recommend. And then also deep work. It's uh, a term by. Uh, um, yeah, it's a it's a, a book as well actually that's also very good. Um, but it's they define the work the term deep work and shallow work. It's like the deep work is the like complex work when you have to like use your ha your your brain um, a lot more than like normal task. So it's like cognitively uh, demanding task and like solving complex problem. And this is where you produce the most value. And it's hard to like automate or uh, outsource to anybody else that doesn't know the things you know. Uh, and like shallow work is meetings, emails, and like discussing problems. Or it can be challenging as well, but it's not the thing you need to like focus a lot on. Uh, for extended periods of time, it's like when you discuss a problem with a colleague, you need to kind of f focus for one minute for new talk and then you don't need to focus uh, that much anymore. Um, so why is this valuable? It's because uh, in modern workplace and modern society it gets more and more distractions uh, and this creates uh, scarcity for this kind of work that really benefits from from like deep concentration and solving complex problems. <clears throat> and the market value the top performance um, and work that is hard to replicate. Like if you create something that is easy for anyone to create, uh, it's not so valuable as something that is really smart that you have thought about a lot. And <laughs> and actually it conserves your energy because like uh, distractions that makes you context switch all the time and like switch between tasks it requires much more uh, energy from your brain um, when you have to refocus all the time uh, some strategies for deep work uh, so schedule your deep work sessions like as I saw before as you you should try to like schedule four times every four four hours every day where you have this deep work and no one can, can interrupt you this time. Um, and then I like, create yeah, habits or rituals around this deep work so you li ri really can take out everything, out, everything else away from your brain so you can focus. And it's also very important to have a good rest and good sleep. So it's do what you can to 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 get a good sleep. What's the time now? Um, another five minutes, so yeah, you, you should wind up. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, this is the Pomodoro technique. Um, I don't have so much time, so maybe I can skip this. You can research this if, you, if you're interested. It's, um, 
it's a technique to uh, to really focus on your job. You do it for five, 25 minutes. You set the timer, and then you work for 25 minutes without any interruption. It's actually very popular, but uh, I'm not a big fan because it's. I think 25 minutes is too short to really focus on a task when you're doing complex development. Um, but you can like do 50 minutes or something. You can experiment with the times, but I. But the value of, of this is that you can actually train your head to not be distracted. Um, okay. I should see. Um, uh, okay, some other productivity killers and time thieves that is common in the workplace is, as I was into before, like emails and social media. You should like try to only check your emails once per day or like no, two or three times per day uh, and then really and that's not on your focus time you should do it some other time and then you should answer your emails and then because it's usually not so important to answer your mails so quickly uh, and meetings is yeah it can be um, you have to plan your meetings very good so you don't you don't disturb this four hours block that you need to be productive uh, and like try to encourage like a, a synchronous communication like slack or email over meetings for simple questions and this is like try to batch the meetings so you have like blocks of time where you can work and don't have like meetings here and divide the work so you have like longer blocks where you can focus. Um, yeah, we don't need to do this. And here are some f some good books that you can read. Uh, uh, the Power of Habit and Deep Work is really good books that might change your life. Um, and yeah, that was all. Uh, questions. Okay, thank you, Peter. Do we have any questions for him or comments? Okay, um, yeah, yeah, just the one? Or yeah, it's one over there. Oh, great, okay, fine. Yep. Hi, Tony, just one short question. Um, uh, is there a way how you, you, you mentioned the MIT, the most important test, task of the day, how do you make the task enough small uh, from the bigger tasks to make them chewable, so to speak, to make them doable, maybe, maybe that's the right word. Have you any techniques for that, just shortly? Um, yeah, it's up to the team, actually, to have, like, stories that you, I don't know how you work in your team, it's like, that's something your team have to, have to decide on how you should, how you should divide your tasks so it gets small enough, but you can have a task that is like several days as well because this is your most important task. You should, all your four hours focus time this day should be on this task. And then you can like continue the rest the next day as well on this task. So it doesn't have to finish the task uh, on one day neither. So. Okay. Any more questions right now? Okay, David. Uh, ah. Yes. And that's the final question for. No, that's great. Ta och eftersom jag kan data, då är det ganska mycket av mina medarbetare som hela tiden kommer in i mitt rum att jag ska hjälpa dem med. Nu har det hänt någonting med min data och hänt någonting med mig. Så jag blir störd ganska mycket på jobbet. Mm. Och jag märkte när jag var frilansare, då fick jag så mycket mer gjort. Men nu när jag jobbar på ett community där det är mycket folk och springer och stör mig hela tiden. Men hur säger du till någon, alltså till min chef till exempel, om jag skulle gå till henne nu och säga om oh, jag vill inte bli störd någon mer på ett bra sätt. För att det är just det, jag blir blivit så här konflikt på jobbet för att jag säger åt dem att ja, jag vill precis, inte bli att, störd. Ja, det gäller liksom att ha en dialog om det, att, liksom, att de ska förstå din situation. Att, för det är deras intresse också att du är produktiv på jobbet, så att du får mer gjort. Att, att du kan till exempel att att du använder ett schema att du har att ja, mellan eh, ja, 12 och 
två så har det liksom tid att lösa de här problemen. Annars liksom, den här tiden så jobbar jag liksom, då skulle inte ni störa mig. Ska jag sätta en lapp på dörren till exempel? Att, eller hur det nu gör att <laughs> den här tiden så behöver jag fokustid och då kan jag liksom... Ja, alltså det är ju i företagens rätt att, att du är produktiv på jobbet så att eh, de ska försöka förstå tycker jag. Att, men det kan, kan vara svårt att förstå det också att man inte har konflikter på jobbet. Och det är ju, men det är som sagt i företagens rätt att du är produktiv så att jag tycker ändå att... Ja, precis. Yeah, I think you should always concentrate on the positive way of framing it. So if you say that I can't help you with this, then that, then you're a bad coworker, right? But if you say that I want to be very good and efficient on my main tasks, but I understand that we have this need as well, and I'm very happy to help you, but in order to not disturb me, let's put like two half hours <coughs> each day when I am open and available and um, when everybody gets, gets used to it then it's just that okay my computer doesn't work right now but I'll go and have some coffee and then I can ask her afterwards right okay thank you give a big hand to Peter Elmered <laughs>